Man, you got TD here, Houston Texan, DB. I'm here with the real deal. Ah. Ah. <laughs> TD, Houston Texans, DB. I'm here with the real deal. Ah. Yep, yep. <laughs> TD here from Houston Texans, DB. I'm with my man, Akil, and this is the real, the deal with Akil. I'm, 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 but I'm gonna just start off like this. Cause I'm mad at all y'all. Nah, I'm not mad at my, I'm mad at y'all. Because you know what today is, and you reminded me what today was. You didn't even know today was. I don't care. You tell me it's National Margarita Day, and I don't have no margarita on my table. No, I want, I want to drink it now. <laughs> I can't leave. No, see. See if I, if they, I leave, they got one right now on the street. They do, but if I left, I don't want to leave him. I can't disrespect him because you know who that is? Fifth round draft pick. <laughs> Oregon State. Houston, Texas, DB. Tristan DeKalb, TD. I can't see you. Somebody, they want me to leave. Yeah, you can't leave. You see what I do? I know, I know it's called the real deal, but I don't want to leave. And that's too true. I appreciate true. that, man. And that's fake. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. But nah, your journey, we, we just talked about before we start recording. Your journey is like incredible. Right. Like before you went to Oregon State, which is a Pac 12 school, you said you went to four schools? Yeah, I went to four schools, man. Who was it? it was I went to a D school, a D2 school in uh, Nebraska called Shazan State, and then uh, I transferred, went from there, went to Nickel State, a D1AA, back in uh, Thibodeau, Louisiana. Yep. Then I left there uh, and went to Northwest Mississippi uh, Community College. It's a JUCO, and then I ended up at Oregon State. Damn, so you was all over the map. All over. You got you, you from the South, you from New Orleans. <laughs> Go to Nebraska, that's like Midwest. It's South, but it's like, right. Oh, that's right in the middle. You got Mississippi back to the south. Then you go all the way northwest to Oregon. Yeah, it's, it, it's definitely was different, but man, I don't, I don't regret nothing. I don't yeah. regret not one school I went to. I thank God for you know giving me the opportunity to travel. You feel that's how I take it, and I was just handling the business to get where I am now. How was the transition? Like when you came from you know the, the schools you was at, and then going to a Pac-12 school like. It was it was a different because everybody's good. You know what I mean. You might be in Chazan State. You know you probably. You ain't, you ain't be honest. People ain't coming out the league out of that. So you, it's kind of the the competition is different. And then you know in Nickel State it was it was a little tough. And then uh, JUCO, I ain't gonna lie. JUCO got a lot of talent. You know, a lot of them boys go SEC. So a lot of them boys, you know, what I mean, they leave. They be going to the league too. So it's like I know a couple of people that got drafted out of my year for coming out of JUCO that was ranked out of me coming out. So it's like uh, and when you got the Oregon State, to me is it is really like you've been playing the game. The whole your whole life, so I don't even start looking at the players no more and the talent. I just try to focus on what I got to do. Cause the school you was at Mississippi, that wasn't on that Netflix show last chance. You now know. we actually we play them though. You know what I mean? Like they uh, East Mississippi, they they beat my year. They won a national championship. Then the year I left, they, my team won it. So like we got that talent. That it's talent in Mississippi JUCOs for sure. And then you got when you got to Oregon State. How long you was there for? Two years. Two years, yeah. and you came out your senior year. I'm correct. Yeah, came out my senior year. Yeah. Did you know the how the process was going to go, like transition from – did you know you wanted to leave after your junior or you decided, like, I'm going to just stay one more? Well, be honest, coming out – when I was coming out of JUCO, I, my my whole goal was to play one year D1 and get to the league. Like, I was thinking about feeding my family, you feel what I'm saying? So, and, you know, things didn't happen that way, you know what I mean? I, I ain't tripping. Then, then my senior year, like, I started getting a little buzz, and that's when I kind of figured, like, I'm going to be into this process. You know what I mean? I didn't know if I was going to get drafted. I didn't know anything like that. I didn't even know nothing like that after the season. Did you even. always have the love for the game? Always. always. Like, that's why I went to all four of them schools. You feel what I'm saying? I always knew I could play at the D1 level. And I always knew that I was an elite talent. And I always knew that I was going to be in the league. You just got to tell yourself that. And you tell yourself that every day, I believe you're going to get there. So I told myself every day, and I grind to get there. And then pro day and combine, how was that process like? It was. <laughs> I was going to ask a football player like, the process of, like, the pro day. In the combine, man, I ain't gonna lie, that junk stressful, man. You know what yeah. I mean, like, cause you got you, it's like a meat factory. You go in the combine, man, with some shorts on, with no shirt, yeah. with nothing on. You just got some tights on, and you walk in front of what three hundred, you know, uh, people that's trying to to see who you are, to see what type. Of, it's like you going in a meat factory, and you the meat, and everybody looking at you up and down. You know what I mean? So it definitely was stressful, man. It was. It was it was definitely hard, especially the combine, because you get there, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of my friends, they they wasn't in the league, so I ain't have nobody to ask for advice or nothing like that. So I went in there with you know with blindfold, but man, it was a good experience. But it was definitely special though. Stressful. Was it intimidating? 
Just nah, cause once like once you get start getting around the dudes, like the the dudes you competing with, then it's become competition. Like once you at the combine, it become competition. Yeah. But like when you go back to your room and you thinking about, you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. the questions you gotta ask and how you gotta be on point in the interview, you just gotta be yourself. And yeah. once you be yourself, you you'll be straight. Hey, you read up like on your old like your profile? Like yeah, say, yeah, yeah, man. Like that's, Man, they they be like an old person. They be they be hurting your feelings, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. They I ain't so your, your cousin was Thomas the Cow. Yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, definitely. And they they this they give you a five point one grade. The cut the the um four six two forty. <laughs> Terrible. Eleven reps on the bench press. Thirty one inch vertical. Which ain't bad. I think I think I was around there. Yeah, around there. I play DB. I ain't trying to be. Then you know then they. they it's like it's crazy how they how they break down the players, the limbs and the hands. It's crazy, man. It's, they come. They, the it's unique. Was, this is what they say: the strength has outstanding size with long arms. <laughs> Recognizes misdirection and plays with decent football instincts. Patient feet from press coverage. Then they get to the weakness. Gets behind early when pressing receivers with release quickness off the snap. Hold on, right there. But they, but then before they just say I had good feet at the line. See how, see how they do that? Exactly. It's there crazy. you go. Back pedals from a narrow base with labored feet. Will lose some balance and body control when forced to transition against in breaking routes. When you when you hear something like that, how does that uh fit, feel for you? It just motivates me, man. Like uh, I remember um I remember reading it before the combine when it first came out. So it just it really motivated me just to go out there and, you know, really show them that no. You just try to. I'm just trying to prove them wrong. You know what I mean? That's what I've been doing my whole life. Ain't nobody said I was gonna be here. Ain't nobody. Yeah. Ain't nobody gave me that chance. I was never the 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 favorite in high school, or the mm-hmm. favorite in JUCO, or the favorite at Oregon State. I was never the favorite, but I made people make me their favorite. You feel what I'm saying? I think if I, I think this was me, and I read this bottom line part right here. Where I'm finna read. I think I would have probably like oh, I'm hitting the gym like three times a day. He said. They said the cow lacks the trigger quickness to close separation window that opens against him. So a team may try and convert him into a free safety role where his coverage and tackle may be a fit as a backup. Now, I promise that was me, and they told me something like that. I promise I'll be in the gym like three times a day. Man. I won't even. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they, I'm telling you, they try to hurt you. They, they, they try to hurt you. They ain't played the game but, of football. They, they got to they gotta find a weakness, and they got to find something good about you, and they got to find something bad about you. You know what I mean? But once you balling and making plays, all that stuff they said about you, yeah. they be the same people that say, man, I knew you was going to be good. But you, how you knew I was going to be good? And 10 years ago, you wrote this article saying you didn't think I was going to start. You said I was going to be a backup. So you just got to you just gotta deal with it, man. You you can't pay attention to that at all, yeah. though. You pay attention to it, you, you're going to you're gonna lose yourself. And when it came to Jeff Weekend, how did you know – what did they tell you when you had your agent and everything? That when you were drafted fifth, did they tell you gonna come before fifth or you know, was around the perfect time? Cause I think they get like y'all get like a uh, how can you call it like something like a prediction before you enter a league. Like, draft? like you get a like my agent said. Ah, uh, he said it's a good chance you'll get drafted. Yeah. You saying it's a it's he a tell you where. like because you don't know where he don't know where you know his he can't sell you to a team. Yeah. You know what I mean? He can't get you drafted. He's just there to, to work out your deal or, you know what I mean, or whatever he got to do. But he can't sell you to a team. Maybe they can. My, like, I, I, don't, I don't know that. I don't I don't know the conversation. You feel what I'm saying? But, like, my agent, he always kept it real with me. He was like, I think you could get drafted. He said, I think you could play 10 years in the league. He said, but that don't mean you, that's going to happen. That don't mean a team going to draft you. You know what I mean? That don't mean you're going to have the chance to play 10 years. Anything can happen. But, like, I was just went in it just hoping, praying, you know what I mean? I wasn't even stressed the weekend until, I ain't going to lie, like, when round two or three came, like, really round three came, I was like, because I'll be realistic with myself. You feel what I'm saying? I felt like my two years at Oregon State, I felt like I – I perform at a third round, fourth round level. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because I ain't never been. Def- I knew I wasn't gonna test four, 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 five big time. I knew like I thought I was gonna run like four, five, five. Like yeah. I ain't never been a, a combine guy. I ran track and I was good at track, but I'm a football player. You feel what I'm saying? Like I know I play football. You can't tell me I can't play football in the National Football League. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just not a the greatest combine guy. I know good guys run four four, but trash. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like it's fast. just it's just fast. It just matter what type of player you is, and you got to know what type of player yourself is. And I'm a long physical guy, so I know I got to be long. I got to use my length. I got to be physical. So that's what I try to do. And the in the process, because you're not in the green room and you at home, are you watching every second, every minute, every day of the uh, draft? 
like I did. Like I did every year before I got drafted. I won't no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like it's per. It's, it's, they don't, they don't have at no. a draft party. Mm, like after for sure, but like during the draft when I got drafted, I was at the house. With my family, barbecuing, you know what I mean? That'd be weird. What if you threw, like, a draft party for, like, the first day and you don't get drafted that first round? Like, do you invite your family members back the next day? I wouldn't because no family members going to talk about me. That'd be so uh, – yeah, that's, yeah, true. So, I always wondered that if you have a house, do, like, a draft party. You know, it's like, like, I always – like, my dream was to make it on – I wanted to go to New York or wherever it was at, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Wherever the draft was, but – that ain't happened, so I went to the plan B. Have my whole, have my family in the hood. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Everybody have a good time, get you a little plate. Yeah. And then it was, oh, I'm going to turn up after. You know what I mean? How's that phone? How's that when you got that phone call? Man. Like, shit. I mean, it, it definitely, like, just start sweating, tears. Like, just to hear, like, Rick Smith to say your name. You know, like, you see these people on Hard Knocks on, uh, on TV, NFL Live, and just to hear them say, hey, my name is Rick Smith. We about to take you in the fifth round in Houston Texans. Like, just to hear that, the wait. I waited twenty three years for that. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So just to finally hear it, man, it was just it was the best time of my life. That was the best moment ever. Oof, I know that's a exhilarating. Like moment. some people, best moment is when they have a kid. I ain't have a kid. I don't got no children. But so for right now, that's the best moment I ever. That's the best feeling I've experienced. So when you stepped foot on a count at uh during, cause you said you missed OTAs because right. of. Academics and you have to go back. I had to graduate, yeah. Graduate. When you got you got here, you got to Houston in late August. Well, you couldn't because I was Harvey, so you got right. like. Well, I went to Greenberg. Greenberg, you know, we had a camp in uh, West Virginia. So yeah. when oh, we went yeah. there, so I, I arrived on there, and I was starstruck, man. Yeah, you see like, JJ. Right, because, you know, I like, be honest, I miss OTA, so I miss that time to see those guys, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To learn for those guys, to get to know those guys, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it's training camp, I'm trying to do that, but you got to think about it. Everybody battling for their job, so they ain't really got time to be trying to, you know, kick it with you or teach you. Like you feel what I'm saying? Everybody trying to eat. So I had to get a, you know, what I mean, I had to start from scratch. But even though, like, we had a in our DB room, it's J. Joe, those guys, man, it's all respect because those guys found the way to, you know, take time out to try to, you know, catch me up to speed. Yeah. But it was definitely, it was definitely a big transition though, for sure. And you had in front of you. Kareem Jackson, Joseph, Kevin Johnson was still in the process trying to get back in rehab. Yeah, yeah. So you was the. But he, uh, he was, you know, he was, uh, he was healthy uh, come training camp. So. Do so you think that was the reason why you didn't play a lot? No, nah, I really be honest with myself. I had a training camp. I think that was the worst football I ever played. To be honest, I was surprised I made the team because, like I said, I miss OTAs. So like I had to really, I had to learn their technique. I had to learn the playbooks. You know what I mean? Yo. And I ain't have time because you, you in. You're in training camp for two weeks, then you got a preseason game. Mm-hmm. Like, that's big. That's different. You feel what I'm saying? That's All I was doing is working out every day, running. I wasn't learning technique. You feel what I'm saying? So it was it was definitely tough. But then when it, when it, the lights come on in the game, all that went behind me. And I had a pretty good, two pretty good uh, preseason games. So I guess that's why, you know, I feel like I – I made a team, but in my opinion, I don't. I tell J. Joe that all the time, man. I don't know how I made it, but I'm thank God I made it because once I made it, and then once I got it right, yeah. then it was. I, I, I knew been around J. J. because I knew you say you was. It's, it's kind of like being starstruck, right? So you see, like this guy J. J. is like going to go down as a first battle Hall of Famer, and you in the same locker room as him. Y'all play. Y'all both right. play defense. How was that first encounter? Be honest, he wasn't even the the person that starstruck me. Who was it? Clowny was. Clown. Oh God! Like, big, oh my God! I used to work. So, bro, <laughs> right? Like, old six six dude. Clown. Dreads. That's oh what I'm saying. God. Like, I watched him when he was at South Carolina. You feel? I was in JUCO, so like, South Carolina offered me. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I watched him. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he was just to see him. Yeah. Like, man, that's clowning. Like J Joe. Like he twelve year vet. You feel eleven year vet? Like yeah. he been doing it. He was doing it when I was trying in high school. You feel uh-huh. what I'm saying? Like, I've been to who he was. He's been locked down. He's been, you know, first round, all that. So, it's like, when you see those guys and, and you see they whips, you're like, he really living. Like, they really motivate you. You feel what I'm saying? And they, those guys really starstruck me. But those those guys are humble. You see the facilities. You see all them cars, uh, Rolls Royce, right. Mercedes, BMW. But they humble with it. That's uh, why, you know, when, once you humble with it, man, that's that speaks value of your, your character for sure. Mm-hmm. And... When you when you got so when you got there, you made the team. Right. Just take take especially take me through it. 
take a take the people that listen to it how it is in a film room and how much you got to study and the playbooks, how much film you have to watch and the cover. Just just walk me through it like a film session. Is it's really just like when you're in class. Yeah. When you're in college, you got to take them notes. You got to listen. You feel me? It, it really ha- it matter on how you learn. With me, how I learn is I'm a visual learner. So I'm looking, like, if he explaining a technique or he explaining a coverage, mm-hmm. I got to look at him explain it. Or if he's writing it on the board, then I'll look at it over in the playbook. You feel me? But I got to see it first. You feel what I'm saying? That's how I learn. Everybody different. So, when, like, once I see it and then I can read over it and go through it, then I'll be good. But I ain't going to lie. In the, man, that junk hard, man. It just Because yeah. he's talking to everybody. And he might be talking to you, like say the coach talking to you, but he might be saying something that can help me. So I got to listen to what he's saying to you. Yeah. So you really got to be all ears focused on listening to what you what he got to say. Because, man, think about it. You fighting for your job. Like yeah. you fighting to feed your family. If you got kids, but why are you fighting to support? Like you got to support them. So you got to put everything into it. You got to watch that film. Yeah. You got to know they receive his tendencies for me. You know what I mean? You yeah. gotta you just gotta know that because if you don't you're gonna get embarrassed on Sunday and you're gonna lose your job. Just give me all right, just describe just give me one play. Say you in the huddle with your defensive players mm-hmm. and Whitney Merciless is in the huddle. Just give me one play he will say to y'all and y'all gonna run it. Just give me one. Like the full play. All right, what you mean? Like Like you know how in the quarterback you gotta be like, uh chips right, wide, zigzag. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. so what's the one play? You, you could be like it could be like the play y'all never run. Right. Like, get, what would he say inside the huddle? Like, here, just coming up. Let's go, guys. You know, we'll look to the sideline. But we really don't get in the huddle, though. Yeah. So, he'll just, he'll just look. He'll make sure everybody's looking. He'll be like, hey, make sure you're looking at the, you know what I mean? But we don't, we don't, don't huddle. Like no, he don't got no play like Yeah, like, we'll just look at get the signal and then. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, like we side. play DB. Like, DBs, I ain't going in that huddle. Because if I go to the huddle, that's waking my energy running to the hole and running back. You know what I mean? I'm trying to see what, what formation they. I'm trying to see what receive over it. Like, you, it's so much. One play, man, is so much you gotta focus on that people don't. It's more than about just looking at your receiver. You oh, gotta yeah. know, you gotta know what formation they, and you gotta know the personnel. You gotta, you gotta know what what they, what down there, what they, what they tendencies to run on this down. You feel it's way more. I always wonder how it is on defense when because you don't have a huddle really, right? Like my coach uh, when I was at uh, Oregon State, my DB coach, Coach Hall, he played in the league, and he he basically say, man, the league football period is ninety percent mental. Like you in the league for a reason. Every you athletic, but what separates you? Yeah. Like what's gonna make you make that play? If you know what's coming, you's gonna make that play. You feel what I'm saying? That's why you gotta be in that film room. It's just like a hundred plays on defense, just like offense. Right. And you're not in the huddle, and you gotta watch it. You gotta watch the. Um, you gotta watch everything, coach. man. Oh my. God. You gotta. You, you gotta be awoke for sixty minutes. Yeah, you gotta be. You gotta be. You gotta be ready. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that's why. That's why I say, man, Dion is. He the different. Greatest cover corner, like he different. He shut down a whole side for a decade. He different. It never been that of him though. Like, who was your guy when you grew up watching? Yeah, J- Jonathan Joseph. Now he wasn't like my favorite guy, but I knew of him. But yeah. I'm a I'm a Pat P fan. So I died. Uh, like ain't you think he the best corner right now? Man, you you can't put nobody on the field that showed me different. I ain't gonna lie, Hopkins got him this shit. This area. That's gonna happen though. He, yeah, it is. he got hopped too though. You see the pick? Yeah, yeah. like he go. Bro, he's ain't nobody in the NFL covering the best receiver every play, man to man. Press. Yeah. I don't care who you. I don't care you got eight interceptions. You not. You not getting interceptions in man coverage. Yeah. You getting interceptions watching the quarterback. Pat P play man and picking it off, and he's still doing it at a high level. And he been doing it what nine, ten, yeah. eight years. And I think, I, and, I, and I could be wrong, but the guys that's been the best corners. Have been like I'm not. Your Pat Peterson is the is the, to me the best corner right now. Hey. But I think when people take the notor people take action when and they be more attentive when they get far in the playoffs. Like for example, the Real Reavers. The year had Reavers Island. Right. They got all the way to the conference championship, so people started seeing him more. Right. And he was officially labeled as the best corner. Right. You go back before that with Dion. Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Forty Nine won the Super Bowl. Right. Rod Woodson. And I think now, I think if – and remember the, the year with uh, even Green Bay, um, besides Al Harris, you had Tremont Williams when they won that year. They took Harris, notice nice, of Tremont. And I think that's what's missing with Patrick Peterson. He's on a team where they kind of rebuilding almost. Right. They got a bunch, They got a cost pump that's up in age, Larry Fitzgerald, but they about to be in a rebuilding phase. 
And I think if he went far, I think people would officially name him the best. Because people are saying Ramsey right now because he went far to the playoffs. He, don't get me wrong. Ramsey had a great year. Yeah. Ramsey, nice. Yeah. It's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't see Ramsey playing man-to-man every play. Mm-hmm. I don't see. He do travel, though. Yeah. He do travel on the best receiver. Yeah. Ramsey do. He nice. He top. He, he top yeah. Yeah. For sure. It just pep. I haven't. Mm-hmm. Ramsey been in the league two years. Like, even if I like. That's like if I go out next year and just ball out. Yeah. People ain't going to say I'm the best. I only did it one year. That's true. And you, Pat Pete, did this eight. <laughs> you yeah. He do this every year. Like, every year he in the, in the name of the top corner. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's like with Sherman. Sherman, he's good at what he do. Like, he's not no man. I like Sherman. I, 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 I love Sherman. I always the baby people, Sherman or Peterson. Like, I watch Sherman. Like, that, that's who I put my game on because my frame is his frame. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I got jersey like he don't got jersey. I talk trash just like he. So, like, be honest, he's like, he like a, I'm going to spin an image of him. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I really look up to him. But Pat P would always be my favorite corner ever. Yeah, I'm going to ask you this. Even though you was a, this, your, this is your first year on the team, and we know how the NFL this whole year was the protest. Kaepernick. Set the tone for the protest. Yeah. When Bob McNair said what he said about, you know, about everything, what was not only your team reaction, but your reaction? Well, you know, everybody on the team felt some type of way about it, from what I can see. But, like, I ain't no prisoner. I work hard not to be a prisoner. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody in my family went to jail. I ain't never been to jail. And I hope I don't go to jail. So for him to say something like that, like, don't even look at me like that. Don't even joke with me like that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I took that person. But I don't think he's the only person to feel like that. Oh, hell. So it's like, but what is, what is me? Like, I, I, I kneel, but I'm not about to keep kneeling because I, I got a family feed. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like, ain't, ain't no, I'm a rookie, man. Ain't no, ain't no need for me to go out there and be doing all that extra stuff. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because I, I need I need Bob McNeil. <laughs> you feel Bob McNeil pay my rent. I need him. He feed me, so I need him. Yeah. That just, but I'm not. I don't respect what he said, and mm-hmm. I got like I feel why I feel about him, but yeah. I never like disrespect him or I never mm-hmm. do nothing like that. Or because that's just how he feel. Yeah, I mean, he was, raised yeah. different. Yeah. I was defending. I was defending y'all when I was talking to one of some of my people and, uh, when that happened, and they were saying about how there's nobody on the text that speak up. You know, we kneeled and, exactly, and this before that was before the Seattle game that happened. Yeah, we kneeled on the Seattle exactly. game exactly, and then he was, and I was telling him like, man, like you got people on the team that's going because we didn't know what was going to happen. Right, you know, I was going to kneel, take the logo off, anything. But if I put people that I know was just saying that, hey, you know, and there if they was in if there was a Texas player, they wouldn't even play. They would just you know take their check and then just leave. I'm you like, ain't getting a check. You ain't getting a check. You <laughs> what you mean? You ain't getting that check. You can't speak on it, but you know. It's just to it's just see how far it will go. This is how I feel. It's just like with your job. If your if your boss man said that, yeah, you gonna feel some type of right, way. I'm gonna keep doing my podcast. Yeah, but I gotta eat. I gotta keep doing this. Like this I can feel. Yeah, this is my livelihood. So like, if you ain't no hundred million dollar person, ain't no need for you to go out there and just do dumb. Like, don't get me wrong. Stand up for like we stood mm-hmm. up for. Don't you gotta stand up. You mm-hmm. gotta let people know like, nah, this ain't. But you. Really can't do nothing else. Like, yeah. you really can't. Like, that's what's wrong with the world. Like, people gonna always be like that. That's how they raise. You're not gonna change a person. Yeah, huh. You just gotta like, find a way to deal with it. Yeah. And that's man, like this racism thing, man. That's that's how I feel. Like, cause it's been, it been going on. It ain't gonna never end. Gonna never, but I did like how everybody took a took a stance. So you gotta take a stand for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. But then you also gotta get back to your. Get back to football. Yeah, you can't. It you can't. Because you play right. for your friends, your family. This is your life. Like, after, be honest. After that, it was really washed under the table with me. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I gotta focus. I ain't got time to be worrying about him. Yeah. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I'm worrying about that. Yeah. Period. And I know now, if you see him, it's like, hey, how you, how you doing? doing? Hey, what's up? Yeah. I ain't gonna. But you, you ain't gonna be smiling. I'm not today. going. I'm not going to drink bills with him. Yeah, for sure. Oh, shit, if you start drinking, with him, you know, Lord, ain't Lord, no then. And the thing that I, and the thing that I tell people too. If the owners are saying that in public, what do you can think? You imagine what the owners mean. They said it was. They said it was at owners meeting, right? At owners meeting. So what do you think he really said? That's the question. Because I know if I'm with my homeboy and I'm talking about an issue that I don't think nobody gonna say, 
Man, I'm about to say something. Yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? That's just the public knowing that. Imagine right. the closed doors. They're on the phone, group texting and all that. Right. You seen that you seen that fool over there get hurt. We gonna release his ass or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just that's that's they in cahoots. Right. It's a it's an organization. It's a it's a frat. It's a family, frat. You know what I'm saying? And them people trying to feed their family just like we trying to feed ours. Exactly. And <laughs> when Watson we're gonna talk about Watson too in a bit, but when Watson went down, first of all, I think you should have started week one. That was my opinion. There ain't no way. You know, I mean, I, I have nothing to get. Tom says probably a good dude. But right. me being a fan, he should start week one. When he went down, the route y'all was going, because it was ascending real fast. Like, holy shit, like this is taking off quick. Right, yeah. And then he went down. The day after the Astros won the World Series, in your mind, was you thinking Kaepernick? Because you had no other choice. And they the same players. Be honest, like – I wasn't thinking nothing, but man, I need a play. <laughs> to be honest, that's facts. Though. <laughs> you yeah. feel what I'm saying? To be honest, like I feel like if I play, like that's just who I am. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? I feel like if you I play, we gonna win. Like, yeah, I like, play though. Yeah, I want to play. Like I ain't got time to be worrying about that. Ideas. But I definitely think if if he wouldn't hurt, it, the season would have went different. And I definitely think maybe Kaepernick could have, you know, helped us, but. Like, I, I never seen him on film. Like, mm-hmm. watching football on TV and watching film is two different things. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I can't judge a person how he look on TV. I can't. I wouldn't want nobody to judge me how I look on TV. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what really happened. Like, it's more than just a person just getting open. Maybe the coach got him open. Maybe it was the perfect play call. Like, maybe it's nothing he can do about that. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe you got great D, he make a good catch. There's nothing you could do about that. You feel what I'm saying? So, it's like... I I think man, I think Tom Savage was good. Like I don't think it was that was the reason. We just a lot of people just got hurt, man, and then mm. and it's hard, man. It's hard in the NFL. It's hard to win. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So it was, I don't I don't blame that one player. I don't blame that coach or nothing. It just mm-hmm. it just was a like tough OB. season. Yeah, I, I like I, love OB. I, I always felt like this year was not his fault at all. It wasn't nobody's fault. You know what I'm saying? Who can you blame? Exactly. You got injuries, <laughs> right. Merciless, right. Yeah, Watt, and Watson. Your three three your top. Right. Dogs, your franchise people got hurt. You know, you can't blame them. Can't you know blame man. Saying? But I'm going to ask you this. You play a position where last year, not this past, but the pre- previous season, the Texans was the top pass, the top defense in the league. Historically, though, they was, on average, it was just in the middle. Right. Going from since 02 to now. But this year, you come from first to last. What can y'all do as a unit on, def- on defensive backs to – to improve, man, we just gotta, you and know, not just the team, but to you, to you as well. I think we just, I think we got the guys. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I think it's just gotta, we just gotta find a way. Just yeah. whatever it is, you know what I mean. Just gotta find a way to whatever it is we lacking to to mess up or to lose game. We just gotta find a way to win, man. You just gotta go out there and grind every day. You know what I mean? And find a way. It's just that's plain and simple. You can't point no fingers. We don't point fingers because mm-hmm. one person don't get scored on. 11 do. Yeah. You feel me? Like, maybe I could have hold them better, but maybe the D-line rush could have got better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's not one player. It's all 11 work together. So, it just we just got to find a way together to, you know, win. That's plain and simple, to be the honest. Teams, the teams, the the games when Watson was playing, it was, as a fan, like I said, been watching this forever, it was fine. I finally felt rejoiced to watch Be them. honest, Play even with games. Savage and Yates, we only, we was in every game but two. Yeah. Well, three. Mm-hmm. The the two Jaguar games and the Steelers. But every other game, we had a chance to win. Mm-hmm. Even with Savage. Even with Watts. Even, Deshaun, I mean, even with TJ. Yeah. Like, we all had opportunities. Like, it's just all special teams, offense, and defense. We just got to find a way to come together and win. Yeah, because yeah, the fan perspective for me, watching on TV, especially the New England game in Seattle, man, I was so like, what the Defense, like, so how you think we felt? Exactly. <laughs> right. And from the fan, I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? I'm thinking to myself, all right. Because I was talking to my, I was talking to my friend about this yesterday. We were talking about both games, Patriots and Seattle. We was like, right. which one was worse as a fan watching? He was saying Seattle. I said it was both the same. Both ran the ball with Lamar Miller three times in a row. Not blaming Lamar, not blaming nobody, but just as a watching on TV, right. you ran the ball three times. You didn't give, you didn't put the ball in the hands of Watson to end the game. Right. Then. Brady and Russell Wilson both go down and score. And I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? 
defense. Like, I'm looking at the backs. I'm like, yo, who had Cooks? Who had Jimmy Graham? Man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, ah. Oh, I, I, I know it's like good Richard watching that on film. I, I wasn't on the field at those times, but, man, just watching it, man, you, it's tough. Like, it's too many warning. Yeah. Like, it's whoever the, the best. When, them, when, it, when the game is online, it's all about who going to execute the best. Mm-hmm. And they just executed the best. And how you felt when uh, Mike Vrabel took the job at uh, Tennessee? Hey, he, he, a young, uh, he a young coach in this, I think, in the industry that's, that's coming up. You know what I mean? Your, how was your relationship with him when you, uh, when you first he, I, I got all this, you know, respect for him. Like, he ain't never – we ain't like we ain't have a best relationship, you know yeah. what I mean? But like he he gave me opportunity, so I forever thank him. You know what I mean? He was cool, man, a real guy. Like yeah. them coaches, I ain't gonna lie. Texas got the Houston Texans. I, that organization, man, the coaching staff that I know, they bro, they solid. Yeah. They they keep it real with you. Mm-hmm. They care for you too, though. Yeah. As a, as a man, you feel what I'm saying they want you to succeed it's on more and off the football. Field. Yeah, it's more than just football. But at the end of the day, it's still a business. Mm-hmm. But with them, it's more than just football. You feel what I'm saying? I think you're a rookie. I think you. Sh- I, I could be wrong. But it's like the adjustment year. Like you're still trying to for sure. know for sure. what what areas in the facility to go to. Sure. How hard uh, the kids. Like, I still don't know everybody in that organization. Like I know all my teammates and coaches, but I don't know everybody in that organization. Yeah, you can't be like, hey, what's, up, "What's up to the guy that, that sweeps up the third floor or something?" Yeah. Like all the time, you know. Right now, know, like, I want to though. Yeah, exactly. You, I definitely want to, but at this moment, I can't. Mm-hmm. It just it's a lot of it's a lot of things. Going on your rookie year, like you got so much things. Like you got them classes to teach you how to save money, how to do this. And like you got a lot of things, but it's very beneficial though, for sure, if you listen and pay attention. So, what's the day in life for you since now? Like you're about to enter your second season, like a 24 hour day of, of TD. Like, what's, what's like going? right now, man? I work out uh, from like 8 to 11. Come home, man. Chill, watch me a couple of TV, watch me TV, play the game. Go play. Yep, Xbox. Yeah, I already know what time it is. Go, go play time. basketball at 24 hours, get my cardio, come back home, eat, and do the same thing over. It's off season, so it's like, yeah. like I ain't got no responsibilities, man. And, like, I ain't got a job right now because it's the off season. So my job right now, to me, is just to work. I got to make sure I work out every day. Mm-hmm. Make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do for my job. Get better, better, better in my craft every day. But after I do that, like, I don't got nothing else to do, so I just go home. What do you think you could work on going into your second season? Everything. Mm-hmm. Like, mental, physically, everything. Yeah. Like, I'll, this year, I'm going to be ready. Like, it's like, it's like when I was going into the league, my my I would, like my mind was just like, make the team. Yeah. That was really my mind. Like, you went fifth round, you got to make the team. Now my mind said, like, you got to go in move and, and move up on a depth chart. Like, you got to eat. Like, I ain't, I'm not used to sitting back. I know it's not going to be easy. I know they're not going to give it to me. So I know I got to put that work in. I'm going to tell you this right now. Me watching on TV, I, I feel like the cornerback is open for you to take. Yeah, every job is Shit, in the league. I, I <laughs> AJ Boy, he came in, took his opportunity. He, nah, he got you got to take advantage of your opportunities. Advantage. Now I'm telling you, hey, I'm not you gotta take advantage. player. I used to play quarterback to be exact right. for like how long? Like eight, nine years. <laughs> eight, nine y'all used to play. So I got some experience in football right. in the eighth grade. Right. But um yeah, I, I would say take advantage of that shit. Got you. Cause got I you. Said, like I said, being honest, I look at Kareem Jackson, he was a safety chance of corner. It's not the best corner in the league. Joseph, to me, is outside his prom a little bit. He's getting up in age. Now it's time for the young bulls, you, Kevin Johnson, Hall. I'm saying his last name right, yeah. Yeah. Hall. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for y'all to come. And then it's now y'all ain't got the pick to the third round. So I ain't watching the draft. Oh yeah, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't advise you to. <laughs> yeah, like if you're a player, do you really watch the draft? You when you might be a second year league player like, man, in, like, in, the, in the NFL. I I can't watch that because there's somebody trying to come take my spot. Yeah, so man, you just gotta worry about yourself. You gonna know about them though. Oh yeah, but you just gotta worry about yourself, man. Who's the uh, so who's the one receiver that you want to hold in the league? D Hop. How's it like going against him in practice? It's like, man, it's you remember when you was a kid, you used to play all mad. The computer used to whoop you. That's how it is, man. For real. That boy nice, man. For real. His hands big as hell, huh? Man, his boy nice. His yeah. hands big like he nice. He So hop. Right. Him and him and Odell is the to me. Oh my goodness. Them them two you can't I don't know. They two different receivers, but 
Man. Yeah, I think the five receivers. Cause I be getting, I be getting my partner's ass every time. I would say that. Uh, I be like, man, you watch Hopkins' sorry ass other game. Even though, I, even though I know Hopkins top five, right? Cause I'm an old L guy. He, to me, he two, two oh one. Well, are you saying because you play with him though? Because you no, because I watch him. What about Julio? He he three. Ooh, Julio three. Who's top three? Like, uh, who, th- think about this. Julio's supposed to do this. Julio six three, brother. D hop. All the top five receivers, well, whoever. Who five? Like, my top, in order or no order? In order. Odell. Odell. Okay, I got Odell. I got Odell. To me, Odell, the best player in the NFL. Best player? To, like, really? Over AB? <laughs> Over Bra- plays my Brady, Rodgers. Bro, what? Odell is nice. Like, he nice. You know, the last, I think the last time a receiver was the best in the league was probably Rice. Like, what can he do? Oh, See, he, that's the thing. Oh, it's like, this is how I look at it. Oh, this this is how I rank mine. Odell is six foot five eleven, but he can do everything, everything like Julio, can do. Julio can do. I like, that's why I say I like Odell. He can do everything. Maybe even better. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Five for me. I'm gonna just say no order. I'm gonna probably. Arrive. But Hop, Hop ain't the fastest. Mm-hmm. Hop ain't got the best. Uh, like he, he ain't the best athlete. Chris Carter, to me. He like I, I ain't never seen nobody like him. He like a Carter mixed with. He got he a mommy a Carter, but he mommy like remember Brandon Lloyd. He had hands, but he was like never. He was like the most unappreciated receiver like in this generation. Like nobody talked about because mm-hmm. he was on bad teams. But Brandon Lloyd had hands, and that's who he kind of remind me of. Hop got hands. He got sneaky speed. He's strong. Like it's not a ball he can't make. It's not a play he can't make. He gets targeted like twenty five times a game. No, I can't. Yeah. And it's like okay, my five is my five. No order. I got, I got uh, Odell, Julio, A. B. Hopkins. I'm still putting Larry in there. Ah, my five: Odell, Hop, Julio, A. B. I gotta go with Juice, man. Landry, bro. Landry? Man, people sleep, man. <laughs> you sleep with sleep, bro. No, Landry's cold. <laughs> he's nice. You know why I put Larry in there? Even though he's up there in age, he does the smallest thing. He do. Larry. You know what I'm saying? Like, Larry really a top five receiver really, all the time. He's yeah. just not my top five. <laughs> yeah, like he's right now. Those he's my definitely five. a first ballot hurt Hall of Fame. For oh, yeah, sure. for sure. So, you. <sighs> Landry, he's cold. He, mom, you know, he reminds me of Odell. Yeah, he's just not as fast and he's as, just a stronger version of yeah, Odell. Yeah, he's just not as fast and got the combine like Odell. Man, Hop is a I, I, Hop nice. Him and Odell one on one. They won. They I got they won. Cause you know A but thing is A B two could do the same thing like Odell. Cause you know how you like Hop. You know how you said Odell does the same thing as Julio. A B nice. Uh, a B nice. I just be honest. I just ain't that high on him. But, but he's nice. holding. If you had to hold one to five, you say Hopkins is the hardest one. Nah, I think I think Odell would be the hardest. Odell be the hardest one because I'm a big, I'm a big. Him and AB would be harder for me because I'm a big receiver. So small, or quick guys mm-hmm. are kind of because I got to be more technical with them. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I know if I miss wrong, if I miss wrong, go Odell, yeah. or he pull me through. It's crib. Yeah. So I gotta make sure I'm more technical with a guy like Julio. Yeah, he big and he fo fo, but he's not as. Uh-uh. Yeah, how would you play? Would you press up on or would you? Just like I'm gonna press to anybody, play? but he's not as uh uh-uh, da 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 as uh, Odell's or AB. He yeah. a dot dot dot, and pff, bye, I'm I'm gone. You yeah. feel I'm gonna catch it over you, but he's not that da 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 da. Uh-uh. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? It's a difference. But you said like the coldest ad. That was like the coldest ad that I'll use like on a rap song. Yeah, yeah, we might have to put that on it. <laughs> but it, it's like it, it's definitely a difference. Like I'd rather hold Julio because he's big. Like he's bigger than me, but he's big though. So I'm, I'm like I'm equipped better for a big receiver. But a guy like AB and Odell, they quick, quick, and they fast. So it's a struggle. You yeah. feel what I mean? It's more of a struggle. It's, it's harder to hold them because they gonna get out of there. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? What's the hardest route to call to uh, to cover? To me, it's an out. I hate out routes. Cause I, I never, cause I never, I never think about an out route. Like, where have you ever think about it? You didn't play in the backyard. What have I do? Run an out route on you for some money? But yeah, worry about it. An out route. Out route. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is, I, like, I'm not even thinking about it. Like, unless you know that like, that's in their tendencies, but I don't think about out route. Because out route, it's. I had a, I had a football player up here before, uh, a few shows back, and he was going against Dion, and he was saying that Dion knew what you was doing by the way you lined up. Like, especially back in the old days too. Yeah, and it's like I heard the out route, the slant route. You think that's? I heard uh-huh. slant, not the curl. They heard the, I heard like the. It's like that Beyond corner strike it. play. It's like when you go in, you go up, and then you go back out to that. Behind it, all of them hard, man. <laughs> be honest, oh, a little more because you ain't expecting it. But to me, I I hate out routes because I never expect that. And then if you jump it, and, and if he that's crib. But what if you jump it and hit you with out and go? Man, I'm talking about you on Sports Center. No, 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 no. So that's a, that's what I said. The one position I couldn't play was I hate. Playing seven that's, on seven, I couldn't play corner. I would be a D back. Corner is the hardest position, man. Corner is hard. No, safety you, to me, I can play safety. I'm, I'm like an alpha. You see everything. Play. I see everything. I can ball hawk. When I used to play backyard football, I was a ball hawk. Right. Outside playing, you know, having a great arm as that I did have is playing quarterback, playing defense when they needed me to. Hey, a kill, play uh, safety. I got right. you. I'm back. I'm ball hawking. But I'm gonna just throw a few numbers out there before uh, before we get out of here. Cause we was giving out the four six two, right, and the, everything else. Four two five is uh what I ran in high school. No, oh, you were you were moving. Huh? I was moving. Uh, I still have whipped you though. I I don't know. I, I don't. Not in the forty not. though. Not in the forty though. Uh, 40, you got me in the forty. Forty four is the amount of sales I can do in a row. Ooh. Uh, thirty eight. My vertical in high school. Ooh. I was booming everything. <laughs> Woo! I was an athlete. <laughs> athlete. So you were the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll kick my feet up right now. Boy. Yeah, you the man. If I got if I got your number, I went first round for sure. I should have went first. I, I see. You know what I'm saying? I, I could have went college ball, but uh, you know, things happen. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying things happen though. Yeah, you ain't uh, missing nothing. Sixty six. The amount of pulls I can do. Ooh. Uh, uh and then thirty <laughs> is the episode of this show. Uh. T D, A K, R D W A. We out. 56, 56, am I right? Mike, 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 56, 56. Easy, 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 easy. Not easy. Stay back. Max protect. Max, Max. How you say ready? Ready. <laughs> okay. I'm motion to receiver come. Tell him to come like this. The crowd too loud. You know what I'm saying? I tell him to come down from at home. But if I'm on the road, it's hostile environment. I like uh, Atlanta, New Orleans. Then we got to use hand signals. <laughs> okay. Okay, careless. Okay. What's next? Ready! 56, 56, 56. Easy, 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 easy. Said, I tell Hopkins, hey, I give him a hand signal too. Then if I see the corner pressed up on my receiver and I know he could beat him, mm-hmm. I give him a hand signal. I give him a hand signal like this. So I don't want the corner to see me, so I'm like, I'm like, do like a little. Something like this. Okay. Say, hut. Boom. What He's happens? gone. No safety in the back. He's gone. Press coverage. Touchdown. Easy. Oh, you.